Mr. Big Box, 226. And the same tire at Pumpelli Tire, 169. Well, how about that? Not only do we have great prices, we have the best trained sales and service people in the business. Come by one of your convenient Pompelli Tire stores for that great personal service you've come to expect. Hi, I'm Rachel Whitaker, sports writer at the Lake Charles American Press, coming to you with our Week 10 Friday forecast. I'm coming to you from Elton High School, the site of the second annual Bertrand Bowl coming up this Friday night. Elton will take on district rival Bazile in what is a very important matchup in terms of playoff implications as just one game separates the two schools in district play. But the game is about more than just playoffs for the two schools involved as the head coaches are brothers. Elder brother Tony at Bazile and younger brother Kevin at Elton. I talked to both coaches about their preparation for the matchup. Now turning to the Week 10 matchup, uh, the, the coach of your opponent, Bazile, is just slightly familiar to you. A little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit. And your older brother, Tony. <laughs> yeah, a little bit familiar. We, uh, we were, you know, roommates in college. And, uh, and so he and I talk all the time, and, is, and we've, we've done it throughout our careers. You know, he's been coaching now for, I guess, 18 years. I've been doing this for 17 years. And we were always on the phone talking with each other now. We still do that, except for this week. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So, so before, like last week, were, was there a lot of trash, trash talking, I guess, or b leading up to this week's matchup? I mean, before the real preparation started? Not really. We don't really start trash talking until this week. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. we, you know, we talk about the, each other's games and who we played and how that team did. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this week, we, since we can't talk about that kind of stuff, we decide to mess with each other instead. So mm -hmm. he'll send me a text or I'll send him a text or we'll call each other and then we'll, he'll leave it with, with something I can't say and he'll, he'll say something <laughs> that's not nice. And then so uh, I've been getting him and I did it last night at his house. So we, we, we get to mess around with each other a lot. We have fun with it. <laughs> oh, great. And um, how did y'all both get started into coaching in the first place? Was that kind of something that y'all did together or separately? How did that happen? No. Um, he, he went into coaching right off the bat out of high school uh, he went, when he went to college. Uh, when I got into college, I was in something totally different, and I was taking a lot of the same classes that he was taking, and I just, I, I knew that when I was there, that this was what I wanted to do, this is what I love to do, and so uh, we just kind of went from there, and, and, um, and it's, it's part of our life. We have a sister that coaches also at Basile, so it's just something that, that our family does and, and that we enjoy. and, and uh, I don't know. I guess we'll do it forever. Yeah, yeah. And um, of course, with you guys having having Micah as one of your big offensive weapons, how do you think that that your offense will be able to attack the Zeal's defense? Oh, that's a secret. I can't tell you that kind of stuff. <laughs> what we're planning on doing? No, I mean we. It, it, everybody knows. Anybody, everybody knows what we're going to do. Right. I mean, it's just a matter of uh, of stopping it. So, uh, Oberlin did a great job of it. Um, so uh, it, it's really no secret what the two teams are going to run the football. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's going to be who is having their best game that night is going to determine who's going to win. Right. And, of course, with um, El Elton with one loss in district play, Bazile undefeated in district play. But um, So a lot on the line this mm -hmm. week. And, of course, Oberlin also in the mix as well. What have you been telling your guys about the importance of winning this of winning on Friday night? Well, we, you know, we've been talking all, we, all year long about the importance of every Friday night because of the power ratings and everything like that. Uh, they don't care if you're a district champion or not. They just care how many wins you get. So uh, they know it's an important game. They know it's a big game. They understand that what's on the line. Uh, we just got to, uh, we got to shut all that out and just focus on the task at hand and that's playing well against Basil.
sibling rivalry going on here? Well, <laughs> I guess, you know, obviously football is a competitive sport yeah. and uh, uh, we're going to both do what it takes to, to, to win and at the same time when the ball game's over, you know, we'll help each other out and, and we've been doing that, you know, the last two years since he's been at Elton. Mm -hmm. uh, he and I have been coaching a long time before, but it takes on a, a, a little different meaning whenever he's the head coach of a, of a team in our district and someone right. so close like Elton is only three or four miles up the road, you right, know. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, obviously it's a little bit different than a, than a normal year. Right, and they uh, got the best of y'all by just two points last year. Yeah. So is there a bit of a revenge factor going? Well, it's a, last year's game is, is hard to forget, you know. Uh, matter of fact, we was looking for that film the other day to watch it and kind of see what they did last year, what we did, and, and we just can't find it. And I don't know if that's coincidence or not, that people are trying to, to forget about that so much they might have threw the film away. I don't know, <laughs> you know. So, uh, you know, yeah, it would be nice to, to, to win the game, no matter if it's if it's he coaching on the end or not, you know, because it's such a big game. Right, right. Of course, huge, huge uh, playoff implications with uh, Oberlin also in the mix there. Y'all... Y'all got the best of uh, of the Tigers last week. What did that win do do for you? Do for you? Uh, it, it was a very special uh, night for us. You know, we took it uh, as it was a playoff game because it was a playoff type mat atmosphere. Uh, you know, both stands, uh, sets of bleachers were completely jam packed, and uh, you know, a lot of excitement in the air. The weather's nice and everything, and to come out with a, a big win over a good team like Oban was very special, you know, especially since they had just knocked off Elton and, and it appeared to me that they had the edge on everybody else in the district at that time and I just thought we played a real good game and, and it was a very special night. And uh, of course Elton's workhorse running back and uh, Michael Van, gonna, they pounded it with him all, all season long. Uh, mm -hmm. What are the keys defensively to slowing him down? Well just like when we played Oban, Oban likes to run the football a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and as as does Elton and, and as do we. I think it's going to come down to tackling. You know, it, it, it's one thing to be in the right place on defense, uh, but if you don't tackle well, then it's you in for a long night against a good running back like like him. You know, so uh, I think if we're in the right place and we tackle well, you know, we can we can hopefully try to limit him a little bit. Elson has largely ridden the performance of junior running back Michael Levan en route to an 8-1 overall record so far. Levan has rushed for more than 1,300 yards and 13 touchdowns so far this season. Levan told me that the whole community is very pumped up about the Bertrand Bowl this Friday night, also known to residents as the Battle of the Bayou on the line against Bazile on Friday night. What's been the excitement level like in practice so far? Oh, it's, it's, it's very exciting. You know, we just we want to come out here. We want to show them. You know, it's a big old rivalry, battle of the Bayou. You know, battle of the Bertrands. And last year we stepped away from, them, but uh, they, they came big last year, and we want to show them that we uh, we coming very hard from last year. Right, right, Bill. Yeah, just a very very slim victory last year, um, but. Yeah, the, the only blip on y'all's record has, was the Oberlin loss. Uh, what did y'all learn from that game? Uh, we, we learned to uh, always come out ready, always come out focused. You know, we, we, we came out thinking they was going to lay down to us. They also arrived, but we thought that we were way, we, we are way much better than them. But, you know, we just won. We came out, we, was, we came out slow. They jumped upon us and uh, we just fell apart. How do you beat Bazile? Uh, taking care of the ball. Mm -hmm. Taking care of the ball and tackling. That's all I had to do, take care of the ball and tackling. A key player to watch for Bazile offensively is Dylan Mott. He missed three games earlier this season after pulling his hamstring in the game against Pine Prairie, but he's back at full strength now. I talked to Dylan about his role in the offense, as now he's taking snaps at both quarterback and running back. We ran a little bit of, uh, started the Wildcat formation last year against Elton, it was the first time we put it in, and we used it a little bit in the playoff game. Uh, I I normally just played fullback last year and then started throwing the ball a little bit this year. So I think me being able to throw the ball and run the ball has helped us win mm -hmm. even more. And our quarterback Trenton being able to go out and play receiver has also helped us out a lot. Right, right. And uh, like we talked about, y'all being undefeated in district at this point, um, and the district title really on the line this this Friday night. Um, talk about the intensity among, among y'all as, as players heading into this final regular season matchup? 
Yeah. Well, the uh, the atmosphere is crazy. Starting off the year, no, I don't think really anybody thought we'd be here with the group of seniors we lost last year. But nobody's really had that quit attitude. We've had that go get it attitude all year. And we've been working hard in the weight room, practice field, in games. We just play as a team and we've managed to pick up a good little bunch of wins and put ourselves in a predicament to win district altogether. The game I'll be covering Friday night is between LaGrange and Washington Marion. Last Friday night against Appaloosas, LaGrange clinched a share of its first district title since 1999. If Washington Marion can beat LaGrange, though, this Friday night, they'll be tied at 4-1 atop the, atop the District 4-4A standings. And another team you can't forget about is St. Louis. The Saints take on Beauchene this Friday night, and if they win, all three teams will be tied atop the district standings. And now here's a look at the rest of the Week 10 matchups. Barb will try to extend its district record to 5-1 this season when the Bucks host 3-6 Lafayette this Friday night. If Barb can win, it will clinch at least a share of the District 3-5A title. Thanks for watching this edition of our Friday Football Forecast. Be sure to tune in next Monday to see how the final week of the regular season panned out. And as always, pick up an American Press print edition daily for a look at scores, features, highlights, and analysis from high school, college, and professional sports. For now, from Elton High School, I'm Rachel Whitaker.